welcome to Worth Quoting, a television program produced by Florida Community College of Jacksonville. I'm Carol Spalding, your host, and today we have a wise woman with us. We have Sabina Caponelli. We're glad to have you. Thank you. I'm really pleased to be here. The Women's Center at Florida Community College is starting a new program called The Wise Women. And we are so glad that you're here because you inspired us, in fact, about the wise women with your Cherokee heritage and that kind of thing. Um, but really, I think one of the reasons we are interested in, in talking to you is because you're an expert in individual and organizational transformation. That's always intriguing. Mm -hmm. And a corporate consultant and a transformational coach and an actress and a speaker and an author. And, and you're talking about authenticity. So um, I really want to know a lot about this idea of authenticity. Can you talk about that first and we'll get a little bit more into your background? Sure. First of all, authenticity to me I think I'm just going to talk about it from my heart, is really the core energy of who I am. So kind of like an orange seed is the essence of the fruit of an orange. In that same way, I, I feel like if each one of us were encouraged to be that authentic self that we are, we'd bloom and grow, too, into that unique purpose that we are. And we're in a place, FCCJ, we're in a place where we can do that. So, and I also believe authenticity is about the culmination of, of all of our abilities and talents, whether we're a man or a woman. It's about all of who we are. Well, what, what inspired you to, to pursue that topic, and in particular to write the book about authenticity? Mm -hmm. Well, the book is co-written with my husband, uh, George, and I've been inspired to write about it for a very long time. It, I, we both knew that it would help us. It was quite a process in, in writing it together, and, and it instilled authenticity inside of me. And as well, I think it's because I want to make a difference. I believe that we're living in a very tumultuous world, very a ambiguous right now, and fragile. And from my end, for men and women, but particularly for women, I wanted to encourage women to really look inside to their own gifts and talents and create something in the world that is distinct yet uh, complementary to men, not so much like men. Because I believe women have this authentic energy that the world needs today. And I think we're just very hungry for it and that we can, we can bring it out in the world if we stop working from the point of view of, of ego mm -hmm. and we begin looking from the heart. That sounds very inspiring. How did you get into this, I don't know, I guess it's a business, right? The business of speaking and sharing and writing mm -hmm. and all of those things. How did you get started on that journey? It's a circuitous route. I began many years ago as an actor. That was all about me, my face, and getting out there, and then I, I, I noticed in the process that it was not so much about me as it was about what I had in my heart, what I had to share, and how the really good actors are the ones who are vulnerable and they inc incite inside of you something that is, is very authentic. And that's why you like them and that's why you relate to them. So I evolved. Uh, I had a very dark time in about 1990, and was inspired to put together a promo um, with a lot of support from some Hollywood celebrities that would encourage people around the world to do good things. And so it was going to be a forum for people doing good things. And, and then at that time I began writing and I was led to some energy work that is quite incredible. And from that work that I'm doing, it, it literally saved my life. I was in a very dark place. My mother had passed away. I had gone through um, a very emotionally draining divorce. It was just a dark time. And this work informed my whole life. So what is energy work? Well, I was led to some remarkable Eastern techniques that are thousands of years old that are really all about regaining, retaining our power, and our power is our energy when it gets down to it. So, in a nutshell, they work from the inside out. Rather than in the, in the Western culture, we're looking good on the outside. This is about 
working from the inside out. If your organs are not in good shape, <laughs> you're not going to look good on the outside. So it's rebuilding and uh, very energizing, rejuvenating, balancing. It brings clarity and focus and a tremendous sense of self-love. This is something people <coughs> can learn to do. Yes. Yes, it is. So I began studying it from a master in 1990 and then another master. And I'm, I'm just insatiable. I keep wanting to learn more and more. And I've distilled it into a wonderful program that's my own program that I use wherever I go. It's portable. I call it the Portable Self-Enhancement Program. And in any case, it's really a combination of breathing and contemplation and movement all in one. So that those exercises have really changed my life. And through that and then meeting my husband and, and moving on from there, <laughs> writing the book, we just keep evolving. And he's, he's a consultant, so I learned through him, through major corporations around the world, really. Yeah, I saw that you were consulting yeah. to NASA and several mm -hmm. other kinds of scientific places. How are they dealing with this Eastern energy thought? Well, I'm not, uh, they're not that accept, it, it's not that I, I can't do it. I haven't done it really that much with them. I've done it with executive teams. The work that I've done with corp corporations, really rocket scientists, I can say that I've worked with them, <laughs> uh, has been more in the, the corporate team building and strategic planning and that kind of thing. And occasionally we do some of this energy work too, um, but not so much with them. I've done this more in um, offsites, mm -hmm. let's say. Corporate mm -hmm. offsites. All right, but let's talk about the the authenticity and how it deals with the empowerment of women. How does that work? Well, first of all, women. I believe that women have already got all the energy, the feminine energy that incorporates uh, being authentic. I think men have it as well. We just have a little bit more accessibility to it, and this is the energy of the heart reverence for life and compassion and kindness and the life-giving inherent ability that we have to begin with. So what the book does is in really encourages us to use those abilities and not to be afraid of them or to try to use them in such a way that, that a man would use them, which I think is sometimes the case with women today. The book encourages women to be who they are and to really stand tall in that, to not be afraid of it. To, to I, I believe, literally, that if we can walk into that, all of us as, as humanity, that the world will change. It's just that we've been in the ego so long that we're so used to that paradigm. It's, it's kind of hard to shift out of it. And I, I believe that women can move us right through. I really do. And the book encourages everyone to use those, those that capacity. Mm -hmm. I think that some core. people would be very familiar with ego, but maybe others are not as familiar with ego and why that would be a problem. Can mm -hmm. you talk about that a little bit? Why ego would why, be a problem? Why being so? in your ego is a problem. <laughs> well, ego is a good thing as well. It's not, a, it's not that I'm saying it's a bad thing. I use this concept of the top office, this, this thing right here, the mind. And it's a good thing. It's just that when we... When we don't connect it with the heart, I believe that's when we get in trouble. Because there are a lot of there are a lot of energies connected with the ego of pride and control and resistance and force and all of those things that have gotten us into trouble as as humanity in trouble for thousands of years. If you look back at all of the civilizations that have been in harmony and peace, it's been because they have gone to the to the heart. All of those compassionate virtues that we all have. So I think that that's why we're here, is just to, to find that balance again. Do you have to go through a dark time, a crisis, to mm -hmm. really reach into yourself and find this out? Or, or is this sort of an evolutionary process of just getting older? <laughs> <laughs> that's an interesting question. I believe that uh, authenticity is about inheriting our true gifts. And occasionally, I do think that that's true, that we do have to go through a dark time. Our first book was called Say Yes to Change. And I strongly believe that, that we have challenges in our lives so that we will tap into the gold that's right there underneath them. 
look at even 9-11 as incredible uh, of a disaster as that was, it brought out a lot of gold for people. There was so much connection and so much opportunity to see the good underneath it all, underneath the bad. So I believe that sometimes it takes a crisis, and not everybody's the same. Some people have the wherewithal to just rise above everything. I certainly changed my life when I hit a bottom, so I think sometimes we do have to hit a bottom so that we'll, we'll grab on to those, those really unique gifts that we have and say, wait a minute, I can do this. So yeah, I think sometimes challenge is very, very beneficial, and we can choose it also from time to time, which I think is good because it's a belief in tomorrow. We can choose what? We can change? choose change. We mm -hmm. can choose challenge because that's a belief that we can do it, and it's a belief in tomorrow that, that there is more to life. Rather than staying static, which is the easy way to go. So is change then, mm, I <laughs> guess change, change happens to you and you don't like it, or change you choose might, you might like. Is that mm -hmm. how you split it up? or? Is it just going into <laughs> the unknown, and it's a good? It's good for you just to go into the unknown hmm. and try and change yourself. I think that is good sometimes to go into the unknown, don't you think? Mm -hmm, I do. No, I th yeah. I really do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I really do. I think Deepak Chopra said it's not the unknown we should be afraid of, but the known, because that's where our rigid perspectives lie. It's again, we're in a box, mm -hmm. and we and we start to confine our hearts as well. Mm -hmm in a box and so it's setting a whole new foundation every time we say yes we're saying okay I'm ready yeah that's when things are offered but sometimes you need to go seek them out too mm -hmm. and then getting ready for that I think is it takes a lot of courage mm -hmm. well I do I think courage is a big part of this but not in a Pollyanna kind of way I think it's more of an, in a way of of being willing to look uh, being almost uh, an ingenuity about looking for what could be there. What is the open door? What's the possibility for me here? How can I, how can I grow? What's my next step? What does this have to offer? I believe every single person is there for a reason in our lives. Nothing is an accident. There's a reason why we met. There's a reason why everybody is in this school, why we've come to this particular configuration this time of our lives, there's something there for us to learn. And a very wise teacher of mine said, whoever you meet, there's always something to give and something to learn. So ask yourself that. And I try to do that because I don't care who the person is, I have, a, there's a gift there for me. If you know how to take it or receive it or if you're, oh, if you're paying sure. attention. Mm -hmm. hmm. yeah. Okay. Well, um, what do you tell people who have gotten off track? How do, they, how do they even know that they're off track? Some people are just trapped. Mm. Well, I think you can tell if you're off track by a lack of energy, first of all. Energy is a big thing with me. I just think when I'm not feeling good, have you noticed that? When, when I'm down and my energy isn't really where it should be, I know there's something wrong. Okay, what, did I, what have I, do I need to eat something? Do I need to lie down? Do I need to take care of myself better? Maybe I need to go for a walk in nature, that's a big one. Those are ways to help. Uh, lack of passion is another. Are you engaged in your work? Do you like what you're doing? Are you giving to others? Are you just short-circuiting and allowing other people to kind of lead the way for you? Those are all, all ways. Are your values shaped more by the outside world, by looking good, than by what you really feel? Those are, those are ways. Are you resting on your laurels? Mm. Are you really saying, hmm, I have something to give here? Because every one of us has something so unique, and we're really cheating ourselves by not giving it. So another would be delegating your responsibility to others when you can do something yourself. Are you mentoring somebody who might need your help? There's, there's little clues. I think the biggest, though, is lack of energy and lack of passion. Okay, so if, if you're a, let's say you're a full-time, mm, you're a full-time student, a part-time worker, a, uh, uh -huh. a full-time mom, um, you know, you've got all these things in your life, 
you, mm -hmm. you don't have any energy because you're just sort of worn out. You don't have time to pay attention, maybe to take care of yourself, maybe to ask some of these questions. What do you do for mm -hmm. people who are just so frantically busy? Mm -hmm. Well, the world is very highly caffeinated these days. <laughs> <laughs> so we all need to take the time. I believe it's if you had a day timer, what I tell the people that I coach, and on that day timer in one day, you have a list of things that you need to do. You need to put aside even just a half an hour of that time needs to be alone time. And then once a week, at least, you need to have one little jaunt out in nature. It's just putting yourself first is really what it is. And if we put ourselves first, it may sound cliche. However, it's so true because I think everybody knows it. If I don't put myself first, I really don't have anything to give you. So whatever that takes for me, and I think everybody knows what that is. I really do. I think uh, my mother was, I'm the oldest of eight children, so I watched this in my life. My mother did not have a minute for herself, and I saw it spend her. And we have literally, if, if, if I look at myself and I'm 100% of energy in this vehicle, this being, if I don't take some of it for me, then what's left? You if I'm giving it, it to then. kids and I'm giving, exactly, I have to have a well. And that well is taking time to breathe, spending time in nature, a little bit of time every day for myself some time in contemplation or prayer, whatever it is that feels right. Um, definitely balancing. This is what, this is the whole thing, is balancing. I think it's Brian Dyson from CEO, uh, CEO of Coca-Cola said, you know, juggling the balls of your life. And we have recreation he puts in there. People forget that, and that's so important to have fun. Otherwise, we just get very rigid. Yeah. I saw an advertisement from uh, an exercise program that says somebody needs a half an hour of your time and that person is you. And I that's thought that's the first great. time that they, they probably really hit it, especially for women who tend to put themselves last, not put themselves first. That's very well said. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you would agree with that? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I think women are organizers, doers, beers. We, we take care of everyone, you know, very good at caretaking and sometimes we leave ourselves out. And these days yeah. we're taking care of parents and kids and grandparents sometimes, depending on how long people yes. are living. Yeah. That's very difficult. And that, it's difficult. It's, it, I really believe, I'm starting to think that it's just the reason we're here, is to find a way back to ourselves. We are the path. I think in all roads lead back to us. It's not about, okay, it's me and I have to go here and I have to go there. We're it. And in a society, it's hard to know that we're it because we're so busy trying to be something for everybody, really. What personal yeah. habits do you think people need? I mean, in terms of, sounds like you need a half an hour to yourself, but I mean, are there, there fitness and food and all mm. these, uh, you get into all mm. of that as well mm -hmm. as, as far as a, a holistic look at yourself? Oh, yeah. Well, the work I do is called Whole Systems uh, Transformation. So, it yeah, we, we look at, eating fresh fruits and vegetables, really simple things. The truth is, if you did those things, you would feel good. If you just breathed 5% more, it's an incredible fact. You live something like 10 years longer, 5% more breathing. So a lot of times, I'll notice I'm, I'm at the computer and I've got my shoulders up around my ears and I, and I don't even know if I've breathed in the last five minutes. And this happens to a lot of us. And also, it's a way of holding back our emotions. So we don't breathe because something's scary instead of breathing it through. What does it mean, breathe 5% <coughs> more deeper or deeper, more frequently? Or more frequently, mean? longer breaths, breathing properly. So I do a process of teaching people how to breathe properly. And it slows your heart rate. It uh, lowers your blood pressure. There's a time of rest. I get I encourage people, invite them to pencil themselves in to their date book, to do journal, journaling time a lot more. A little time every day is so wonderful because the subconscious begins to talk. It's that 
unconscious that we don't want to deal with that has all the answers. We have all of our own answers. So we have a chapter in our book, Authenticity, called Celebrate the Silence. Spending a little time to just get in touch with that wisdom within, which is where our, wi where our wise woman is. And with her higher power, whatever that is for you, universal life, the force, God, just to, to be connected, because that's really the authenticity there. It's a sp uh, Oprah Winfrey said, uh, what we're all striving for is authenticity, a spirit-to-spirit -spirit connection. And I believe that that is what we're all looking for. So that spirit-to-spirit -spirit is right here with me as well. It's not just with you. It's my spirit with, with the greater spirit, the universal spirit, which I am part of. So, yeah, the time doing that. There's uh, also whole, whole foods and vegetables. If you're going to eat something, you know, make it something alive rather than something processed. Oh, okay. Try to eat alive foods, fruits, vegetables. You know, don't cook them to death. Just very, very simple, those kinds of things. If a woman wants to lose weight, and I get, sometimes I'll get people who come to me and say, look, that's all I care about. <laughs> all right? So we'll work on that, and everything else comes up, of course. And the answer would just be, okay, so just eat protein and vegetables three times a week, and you will drop weight by doing that. And that's the zone diet and everything else, but it's just really common sense, too. Mm -hmm. It's probably also less expensive to do it. It takes more time to prepare it, but it's less expensive than buying processed food. Truth is, it doesn't take more time because carbohydrates are what take time. You have to make a pasta or whatever. Mm -hmm. It's not that you can't eat pasta. You just don't eat protein when you eat pasta. Eat, it, eat that separately. When you have protein, just have a salad with it or have vegetables with it. It's very simple, really. Broil some chicken and put it on a salad. You know? and, and the pasta, what does the carbohydrate do if you put that in there? It, it doesn't allow your body to assimilate very well. Our bodies get backed up. You wouldn't even want to hear what goes on with the <laughs> intestines. <laughs> Not on a TV show. Builds up and builds up. Okay. Yeah. So breathing is really, really important. Um, you, can, you can eliminate toxins because the, the skin is the largest organ in the body. So it's the first thing that shows that you have wonderful skin. So I'm sure you're breathing. <laughs> I'm trying to breathe. Okay. Uh. So the breathing and the and water and all Wa those other kinds of things. Tons of water. Yeah, and getting away from the bad things. Yeah, and if you're a mother, uh, one of the neatest things you can do is teach your children, be a role model and teach your children how to take this quiet time. Put a big sign on your door, mommy is taking her time. You know, this is mom's quiet time, do not disturb. And then that teaches them, oh, I need my quiet time. I have a coaching client whose, whose daughter came in and told her that she needed her quiet time. <laughs> <laughs> Does that mean go it's away? Quite cute. Leave me alone? Well, her mother was doing it, so mm -hmm. she learned. So you can take time for yourself if you, if you decide. It's a choice. Yeah. You do have to, de you have to live it more than you have to speak it, I think, to, mm -hmm. to tell your children. Yeah. All right, so we've got about five minutes, so I want to know about more <laughs> primary piece of advice, of advice that you might have for anybody here who's not able to either read your book or get further into it, but it, you know, just happens to go through mm -hmm. and channel check and land right now and say, oh, let me take something away from this. Okay. So I would say to learn from your mistakes and to acknowledge the gifts that you have, to know that you have a unique purpose and potential in the world, it is truly unique to you, and it's not so much something to um, be discovered as to just be owned, because it's already there. You have it. And to begin walking that you know, in the world, to play more, to rest more. Um, some of us believe that no matter what we're doing, it's never good enough. We never measure up. We're never doing it quite right. And I believe that we beat ourselves up so much in this society. And as women, we always, we're never as good looking as the model or something's always wrong. And I would encourage you to, to know that you have an authenticity that nobody else has. And it's not about the outside so much as the inside. And this is what I think we need to, to come back to more and more. 
overwork has become socially acceptable. We get gold stars for stress. And I don't think that that's, that's necessary. We, we don't need to go down that path. So if we can trust in ourselves and in this unique power and actually friend that we have inside of us and get to love ourselves a little bit, for me, it's trusting in the goodness. This is a chapter in our book. It's so important. We spend so much time working and doing everything on the outside and, again, not giving ourselves a break. So there is a goodness within us. So just be kind-hearted to yourself. Give yourself a break. And know that you're okay. You know, you're okay just the way you are. And you work from there. So acceptance and change what you can. And also, um, I would say, bless everything. Bless everything in your life. Even if it doesn't feel like it's a good you thing. You bet, because it's there for a reason. It's there to teach you. It's there to help you grow. It's there to make you awake. Everything is there to wake you up. So bless it and know that the more you appreciate, the more you're going to get back appreciation. Whatever so you something give. something bad happens, you appreciate it. You bet. I'm so glad I'm in this mess because I'm going to learn something. Because what is it about this that I have to learn? Oh, gee, that's going to give me this. My father was the hardest person in my life to live with, and I finally, in my older <laughs> age, came to love that man. I realized without him, I would have never had the resilience and the strength that I have today. So everything is a gift. I wish I'd known it then. If you'd known it then, what would you have done differently? I would have blessed him more. I would have loved him more. I really would have. You know, and I think we can, we can get the lesson quicker. So we don't have to be eloquent or smart or even be elected. <laughs> All we have to do is be committed to our own truth, our own authenticity. All right. Well, Thanks. we'll leave it at that. And we yeah. want to thank you, uh, Sabina Capanelli, who is the thank author of you. Authenticity. And what you've been able to share with us in this brief half an hour, we're really pleased that, that you're oh, able thanks, to do that. Carol. Yeah, and thank you all for watching. This has been uh, Carol Spaulding with our Worth Quoting series at Florida Community College. Thank you, Sabina.